What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for October 10th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. It is Tuesday. It's time for a little motivation slash positivity. We will get into the game, but I think after that, we all need a little bit of motivation today, a little bit of positivity in our life. And as I'm getting older, and it's a shame that he passed away, I'm finding myself more and more in awe and just... I have a lot of respect and, and appreciate what Kobe Bryant stood for. I've mentioned a few times on here on a Tuesday for our motivation. Just the one TikTok account I follow, which is, I think it's called Kobe Highlights or, or something. And yes, it shows a lot of the highlights of his playing career, but it shows clips of interviews and just sort of get, gives you like a sense of what his mindset is, what goes into his sort of the way he does things, the way he prepares, his motivation and things like that. And I came across one that gave like a, the, uh, I guess you could say a a behind the scenes look at his Mamba mentality and what really goes into it. And I really think a lot of times we get very, very caught up in life and looking at what others have and judging ourselves against other people and like, Oh, well, why do they have that? Why is this? And, He said in an interview, he said, don't look at what I did. Look at how I did it. And I think that also gets lost in in everything. And obviously, that's a great sports analogy for him. Like, don't look at what I've done. Look at all the, basically saying, look at all the hard work that I put in to get to that level. And I think a lot of times, and I've mentioned this on the Tuesday positivity motivation thing before, sometimes we look at where other people are and don't realize that they're everybody's at a different spot or a different part of their journey. So just because you see this one person succeeding in this and it's not just sports and your job or life or whatever the case may be, just know that yes, they've worked hard to get there. So and and I think it's very humbling and it's very important to me, especially with this podcast, trying to grow it from where it was just over a year ago to where I am now, and I see where I want to be, and I see these guys that I'm like, I'm better than them. Like, I have a better show than them. I I, I can do it, but they're at different spots in their journeys, and it's, to me, once I get to there, there, it's going to be nice to look back and look at how I did it, and I did it the way I wanted it to. And, and again, not just in sports or podcasts, just in life, but being a parent, um, being successful at your job. So just remember, don't look at what I did, look at how I did it. And I think that's important. And it's one thing to look at it, but then you got to believe that. You have to say, you know what, I need to work hard. And Kobe, to me, second greatest player of all time, worked hard to get there. And you don't really see a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. That's why I appreciate that TikTok account, because it gives you a glimpse inside his mind. But everybody sees he is the second greatest player of all time. And yes, that's not open for debate. We can have another discussion about that another time. But it's MJ Kobe. No, no, stop. No argument. But people see that he's there and, and sometimes forget how hard he actually did work to get there. Uh, and I think it's a good lesson to, to have in life when you start comparing yourselves or judging yourselves against others. Just know everybody's at a different spot and that person did work hard to get there. Maybe you're just not quite there yet. Um, so... I think that was a, a good message, uh, and that I had this picked out prior to the Phillies game, but more on that in general. But don't look at what I did. Look at how I did it. Spoken by the greatest, second greatest player of all time, Kobe Bryant, and that's how he got that Mamba mentality. So go out today on your Tuesday with a Mamba mentality and just grind it out, work hard, put in the reps, and you'll get there. Okay, now to that game. I'm going to do something I did a lot last year around this time with the whole Phillies run. I'm just going to tell everybody to breathe. Four nothing lead should not be blown a four nothing lead to anybody. Um, but you didn't expect the Braves to get shut out again. Trey Turner just did not have a good game. Uh, I mean, there, I don't think there's any other way. I mean, between the first error uh, and then the. I don't know what happened on the second one. They said, I didn't see the replays close enough. They had mentioned that it may have hit the edge of the grass and took a funky hop, but it's not even that it took a funky hop. He just stopped. 
Like there was no like urgency there. Um, but it happens. Listen, he's been red hot since August. Give him a pass there. Wheeler was just dealing. Um, and I, I feel like maybe Thompson left in him a batter too long. But even that, it's hard to as good and as well as he'd been pitching the entire day. I don't know. I had an issue with him taking Ranger out when he did. I, I, I'm I'm fine with leaving him in there. I mean, and even the the one home run was just. I mean, dude hit it with one hand. Like you can't. What are you gonna do? And I know that was uh, off of Hoffman, but I I don't know. I mean, it's frustrating, especially when you had it and we gave it away. Um, I will say I saw a lot of people getting on Bryce for being aggressive. I don't. I don't mind that at all because that took basically it took a one hell of a catch in order to double him off. And I mean, he made one hell of a catch. I mean, I thought it was going to at least hit off the top of the wall and bounce. I mean, Cassianos might have had a triple if he doesn't catch that. So I'm okay with the aggressiveness there. And that did not cost them the game. Um, that game, like I said, that that's one part of it. But by that point, that game, they had lost it. Um, but here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to tell everybody to just breathe. Take a deep breath. Got to look at the big picture here. If we would have said, you're coming back home to Philly, tied at one game apiece, everybody would have taken it. That place is going to be out of control on Wednesday. And it's really going to come down to Nolan. Nolan needs to pitch his best game of the season on Wednesday. But I, I think the offense is going to get it going. And, I mean, another thing, they left a lot of runners on base. So it wasn't like they weren't able – like they weren't getting the guys there. They just weren't able to get them home. So just breathe. Big picture, we're in good shape. It's a best of three series, and we have two of them at home. So we are in good shape. The pressure is still on Atlanta. And I don't know how much you guys watch this, but – the way that they celebrate it, that that's a defeated team. They celebrate it like they won the World Series after winning that game. And yes, it's exciting. It's a walk off, but that was that was like next level celebrating the way they were. That was more of like a, a type of celebration. So I, we are definitely in their minds. So everybody, just I think if we look at the big picture. As frustrating as yesterday was, the Phillies will be okay. That This is what that team has done all year. I mean, the Braves are a good team. They held the Braves to four, five runs in two games. Not bad. And this Phillies team, as resilient as they come, I, I don't think there's going to be any lingering like, oh, no, here's like, no. I, I think they get it. They, they're, they're moving on. They're going to be okay. It still sucks, though. Jesus, it sucks. Anyway, you know who doesn't suck? Phillygoat.com. Why don't to, to make yourself feel a little better, go to phillygoat.com. Check out their wide selection of Phillies uh, T-shirts, hoodies, hats. Uh, pick up some Eagle stuff. Sixers are starting in, in like a week or two. Uh, the Flyers kick or start playing on Thursday. Union playoff push. There's plenty for everybody there. Go to phillygoat.com. Start your Christmas shopping early. I know Prime Days start today. Go to Amazon or uh, phillygoat.com for, for Jim Montgomery Days. I'll give you 10% off anything on the site. If you go, use that promo code Jim Montgomery at checkout. Go to phillygoat.com. Use the promo code Jim Montgomery when you're checking out. All right, something that I did not mention yesterday, and we're going to finally put a bow on the week five uh, wrap up for the Eagles. Forgot to mention on the pod, because I know a few of you reach out other ways other than my social media. Uh, I'm going to start doing more fan interaction and leading up to something that I have in the works that I'm still working out some of the technical issues for. But I did post a poll yesterday, and I wanted to know who you thought was the MVP of the Eagles-Rams game. And it was pretty close across the board. Uh, Jalen Hurts won with 35% of the vote. A.J. Brown had 26 uh, Jalen Carter, 22, and Dallas got at 17. So it was pretty spread across the board. But be on the lookout. I'm going to do more polls and, and more interaction that way uh, in, in the coming days. Uh, there will be one today. 
So uh, stay tuned for that. But Quez Watkins, and this is the last thing I want to say to put the bow on it. I, I think I'm just over him. I mean, I saw a, a meme uh, basically where it's like, uh, somebody was like, hey, Jalen, I'm open, I'm open. And Jalen basically was like, I don't care. Uh, basically when he missed him on that end zone hit. But I, I, the one pass that he went the wrong way, it was just bad. And I didn't realize how bad it was watching until I've seen the replays and how pissed that Nick Sirianni is. And I just, I, I'm over Quez Watkins. I, I mean, I've, I've kind of put the, the Super Bowl behind me. But now you're doing dumb, dumb stuff again. Like I, I, I just, I, I'm over him. I, I really am. Uh, tell me what you think about Quez. But be, also, be sure to check out my buddies over at the Clashing Conferences podcast. Anywhere you get your podcast and on YouTube, should be a doozy this week with the way the NFC East played and how dominant the Eagles were. So be sure to check that out. Uh, Sixers update: There is more. Uh, smoke i guess you could say coming from the uh woj made a a a comment that the the clippers are very motivated they'd like to get something done sooner rather than later there i feel as though the the sense i'm getting is the the sides are close it's just minor final little tweaks so I, i do think before the uh the season starts. James will be traded, uh, likely to the Clippers, unless there's some random surprise team out there. Uh, but more on that as it develops. All right, today we need. To, it is Tuesday. It's positivity slash motivation Tuesday. Phillies are playing the Braves in the postseason. Looks bad the way things went down. Let's get let's get some positivity here and go back to 1993. And on this day, October 10th, 1993, it was game four of the NLCS. Phillies were down two games to one. They won game one in that series, if you remember, uh, against a Braves team that was much better than them. Uh, and then they dropped games two and three by a combined 16 runs. So you're coming back. Danny Jackson's on the mound versus John Smoltz. So it's kind of looking like, oh, here we go. Danny Jackson just basically said, hop on, I got you. Pitched seven and two-thirds inning, allowed one run, six strikeouts. Phillies won two to one. Danny Jackson also said, you know what, I can swing the bat too. He knocked in the go-ahead run to give the Phillies that two to one lead. Much like yesterday's game, the Phillies left a lot of runners on base, 15. They went one for 11 with runners in scoring position, but the pitching was masterful. Mitch Williams made it sweaty in the ninth, as he did a lot that year, but held on for a four-out save. And we all know how that worked out. The Phillies would go on to win the next two and go to the World Series. So this is not nearly as dire as this situation was in 1993. I very, very vividly remember those first two, those other two games, and just being like, "Oh my God!" There, it, it was a nice run. I thought they were going to do it after winning Game One, and it's just a mess. I remember Danny Jackson just was lights out. Uh, just the like the Braves, same thing. We're getting runners on base, and they couldn't score. Uh, but there is hope, people. The, the, this was a much dire circumstance than what that year was, and that team has a very similar mindset to this team that never say die very resilient so like i said breathe we're going to be okay on this day back in 1993 the phillies beat the braves in game four of the nlcs two to one to even it up at two games a piece all right sticking with our philadelphia sports hall of fame focus for the month as we lead into that induction on november 2nd Today we're going to do a little 20 for 20, and if you want more information on the 20 for 20 as well as this year's induction class, go to philadelphiasportshalloffame.org. You can also get information for tickets for this year's ceremony, November 2nd at Live Casino in South Philly. If you want more information just on general, some of these guys, we're going to do a 20 for 20 today. Some of these guys are not... <clears throat> Have, I've already been inducted. If you want the full list of inductees, figure out how you can volunteer and help them out. Go to phillyhall.org. But today we're going to look at, they call it the mentors, but these are some of the greatest coaches in 
Philadelphia sports history, either for our teams or from this area. And this is just a ridiculous, uh, ridiculous list. You have Beth Anders, who is a nine time NCAA champion and two time coach of the year for field hockey in the NCAA at Old Dominion. Billy Cunningham, we know about him as a player. He won a championship as a player, as well as a coach of the 83 Sixers, who ironically, I did not know. Billy Cunningham still is the Sixers' all-time leading wins leader as a coach, which I guess makes sense. Um, We didn't really have too many coaches sticking around long enough to really get on that list. Kathy Rush, three-time NCAA champion uh, for women's basketball at Immaculata. You know the whole movie, The Mighty Max. Uh, Our old favorite, Charlie Manuel. Uh, Again, the all-time wins leader in Philly's history. Won the World Series in 08. Cindy Timchill. She is the NCAA all-time wins leader and eight-time champion for women's lacrosse. She coached at Northwestern, Maryland, and Navy. Connie Mack, uh, five-time World Series champion for the Philadelphia A's. Most games managed in the major leagues. I think he also holds the record for most losses, too, just because when his teams were good, they were good. When they were bad, they were bad. Dawn Staley, who... Couldn't get it done at Temple, but has gone on to success in greener pastures at South Carolina, winning uh, two-time two NCAA championships there. Fred Shiro of the Flyers, two-time Stanley Cup. Gino Oriema, one of the greatest to ever do it, uh, is from Norristown. Eight championships with UConn. Greasy Neal, two-time champion with the Eagles. Herb McGee, the shot doctor who uh, Ben Simmons was afraid to go see, but out at Philly U, now Jefferson, uh, one-time NCAA champion there. Uh, He has over 1,100 wins, which I believe is second all-time behind Coach K. Uh, Dr. Jack Ramsey, who coached at St. Joe's uh, for years, but did lead the Portland Trailblazers to the NDA championship over the Sixers, by the way, in 1977. Jay Wright, two national championships at Villanova, who is going to be one of the inductees this year. Uh, Excited to try to go meet and and chat with him about his experiences. Joe McCarthy, seven-time World Series champion with the Yankees. My all-time favorite coach and number one ever for anything, John Chaney. Didn't get it done at Temple, but did win the Division II national championship at Chaney State. Jumbo Elliott, track coach, eight-time NCAA team champion at Villanova. Muffet McGraw, who won, coached at Notre Dame and won two championships there. Teresa Grentz, who we talked about back in March for Women's History Month. Uh, 681 wins. Uh, went on to win Big Ten Coach of the Year. Uh, A-10 Coach of the Year. Just a phenomenal coach and kind of just bounced around and, and a great leader of those women. Tina Sloan Green, Temple's own, three-time fencing champion. Or I'm sorry, three-time NCAA champion uh, lacrosse coach. I apologize. Uh, that's Nikki Frank is the the fencing coach who's also in the Hall of Fame. And j- this list is so great, she didn't even make the list. Um, but And then finally, Tommy Lasorda, who I always forget was from this area, uh, the Philly Fanatics' greatest arch nemesis, Tommy Lasorda. But, I mean, this list is just phenomenal. I mean, whether they had success outside of – Philadelphia or success in Philadelphia. Um, I, I think the the lineage and, and the coaches we've had have been great. Like you think about like a Charlie Manuel, Jay Wright, uh, Fred Shiro, uh, even Greasy Neal, uh, Herb McGee, just leader of young people. Uh, John Chaney, obviously my all time favorite, it meant so much to so many people. Um, not not so much for basketball. And a lot of these college coaches, you got to appreciate what they've done for the game and for young people. Uh, but just a, a great list of coaches, and it's I've been enjoying going through this because a lot of these people I forgot either had ties to Philly or had kind of slipped my mind. Um, like the Billy Cunningham thing, I didn't realize he was the all time win leader for the Sixers. But then as I thought about it, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. So. For our poll today, tell me who is the all-time greatest coach of any Philadelphia team. And we're going to keep it to people that actually coached in Philly. So Tommy Lasorda, sorry, you can't make the cut on this one, bud. But who is the greatest coach 
in NCAA or in Philly sports history. Uh, I tip my hand a little bit. You know where I'm going to go. Uh, so be sure to send me who your all-time favorite coach is. Uh, if you're on my social medias, there'll be questions and things like that. So be sure to follow. If you're listening on Spotify, there will be things set up on there. So be sure to interact. All of this is leading up to the Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony in November, as well as I have something on the horizon that I'm cooking up. And once I get the technical things worked out, we will be in business. But on this day, back in 1993, the Phillies beat the Braves 2-1, to one, Game 4 of the NLCS to tie it up. Their, their situation was way worse than this Phillies team. We have the best of three with two of them at home. I like where we are with that. Quez Watkins, get out of here. Uh, I'm, I'm over it. I'm just really done. Let's t- just turn the page on Week 5, turn the page on Quez Watkins, and move on. Remember... Don't look at what I did. Look at how I did it. Get that Mamba mentality as you go through your day. It's supposed to be a beautiful fall day with a rainy weekend on the horizon. So go out and enjoy your Tuesday. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History. I'm Jim Montgomery. And until next time, go Phils.